Next, you would move now to the frogs and give each of one of them a separate voice. I'm not going to do that um, now, but you understand I'm the frog and tell us more. I'm the crown. Um, I'm the doctor. I'm standing here. Um, I'm, I have to take, take care that everyone is, is safe and healed. And um, this is my life's work. Um, and I want to make sure that everyone maybe um, find the pot of gold. Yeah, so you would give the pot of gold a voice on the pot of gold and help the child to give each one of the miniatures a voice so on the tree, on the rainbow, on the fruit and veg, and on the bridge. And what is important is to help the child if the child cannot talk to ask more questions. Hello, Rainbow, tell me more about yourself. What do you do? Who is next to you? Etc. After giving everyone a voice here, the next step is we're having dialogue between the different parts. So as a therapist now, you can um, ask the child, for example, uh, let's say, if the snake could talk to the egg, what would the snake say to the egg and what would the egg answer back? Maybe what would the house say to the snake, for example, uh, hello snake, um, I'm very scared of you, I see that you want to destroy uh, me and you are very poisonous and I'm scared that if I let the people out that you might um, hurt them. And then the snake might answer, oh, you know, I don't care if you're scared, I'm going to destroy you, but um, I'm so hungry, I'm first going to eat this egg. Maybe now um, the therapist can ask, okay, so if the snake can talk to the egg, what would it say to the egg? Hello, egg, I'm going to eat you. Um, I'm hungry and I don't care uh, about you. I'm just going to swallow you in whole in the moment. And maybe the egg might say, well, I'm really very scared and I wish there was someone who can protect me because I don't want to be swallowed by you. And maybe the snake might answer, I don't care, I'm just going to destroy you. And um, then you might move here and you might, for example, also, what would the caveman say to the baby? Maybe the caveman would say to the baby, um, I'm the caveman and although you don't have a mum or dad, I will always take care of you and protect you and make sure that if anything here wants to destroy you, that I will kill them. And then the baby will say back, well, I really feel very safe here and I don't care about not having a mum and dad. As long as I'm here, I would feel safe. And um, maybe you would ask, so what would the doctor say to the pot of gold? And the doctor might say to the pot of gold, Hello, pot of gold. Um, I really know that um, everyone must reach you and I'm really going to try to make sure and help people to, to reach you and to get hold of your golden coins. And maybe the pot of gold might answer, Yes, uh, sure, um, I don't care. You can bring all of them here. And um, maybe what would the frog say to the bridge? Um, hello, bridge. You know, I really want to help this girl to move over to you. And um, how would you feel if she gets there and the bridge might answer back? Uh, you know, that would be absolutely brilliant. I would love to have her here. And there's really um, nothing that can threaten her. And um, yeah, so you can go on and have conversation between different parts. Next um, step after that is now we move to the reality level in Gestalt. And what that implies is that we would ask the child, can it be questions? And the can it be questions would reflect specifically to the responses that the child gave. For example, and it's very important to ask this in a gentle voice. So if you just ask them, can it be that you have someone in your life that's like the snake? Maybe the child would say, no, never. Um, and if the child do that, that's also okay because the child does not have to own the projection in order to grow through what is projected here. But you would rather in a very gentle voice ask, can it be that sometimes you feel there's something in your life that wants to hurt you like this snake? And maybe or maybe not, the child might say, yes, I feel like that. Um, 
when um, there's the bullies at school that are really bullying me and um, you would maybe ask the child and can it be that you sometimes feel like this girl that you would like to uh, to move to that part and how would you feel about moving there and the child might answer about that now your can it be questions would be we definitely take into account the child's age and development cognitive development emotional development so um it's okay if the child just own one part uh, let's say the, the the danger of the the snake and that refers to bullying and the egg maybe that refers to the beginning of life and a very regressed part in the child's life what you can do now is um, you can maybe also is there anything here that can help the egg to move to a, a safer place so that uh, the snake could not eat it or maybe is there um, anything here or can you find anything on the shelf that can protect the egg um, and let's say for example um, the child goes back to the shelf and look around here in terms of all the toys and find this cave and bring the cave now back here and say um this if this cave which can also be a symbol of a wimp is going there the snake would not be able to eat it or to see it and um that then can now we can also what can that be in your real life what do you think can act like this cave in real life to protect you from the bully and, and do you think that um, there's anyone here that can maybe remove the bully to a different place and um, let's say for example the child says so this doctor can um, can come here and she can move to the the baby to protect the baby and maybe the snake can't see the egg anymore and uh, might turn off and run somewhere else where it can try to find something to eat. Okay, so what would that mean in real life? Well, maybe in real life it would mean that if I can protect myself better um, and the bully see that the bullying is not touching me anymore, that the bully might go off somewhere else. Then you can ask Okay, so what um, what can we do at school so that you can protect yourself better and um, the bully cannot bully you anymore and maybe the child can, we can move them to puppetry and role play and practice some responses or ways in which the child can be protected at school, which can be a lot of different handling strategies. For example, I can, um, I'm going to tell someone else or I can turn around, or I can say this back, or whatever um, would be applicable in the situation. We can also maybe move here and also child. Okay, so can it be that um, because of what happened, there is a part of you that still need to get healed of what that bully did to you? And obviously, you would also ask the name of the bully, and maybe as a therapist even, well, most definitely, I would also intervene in terms of telling the parents about that with the child's permission and also maybe even contact the school because bullying is very uh, serious and can lead to depression in children. And um, we can also maybe go to the point of, but maybe the therapist can act as a doctor and help this younger child to get healed and maybe also ask the child so who can that be in your life that um, can it be that there's someone in your life that is always protecting you and the child might say okay but this is my grandfather or this is um, uh, my, my elder brother or this part in myself or you can help the child with options so um, we can now look at this side and we can say all right so now the egg is safe the house is safe the baby can get healed and the girl said that she would like to 